Yes. Say cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> We're just going to wait a few minutes uh, until everyone comes in. Hi, Kamlesh. I see people saying hi here. <laughs> How are you? Kamlesh is a co-lead for our Indian chapter. So we'll start probably at two or three minutes past. So we've had to register, get in. And it all rolls in. Hey Cliff, how are you? Cliff uh, runs our meetup in Australia. <laughs> Hi Prasna. From Patna in India, I think we'll get people across the whole. We have everyone actually. People, I know people are getting up early in the morning in in, in Europe. So <laughs> strong coffee. <laughs> hey, Run, how, how are you as well, Run? Is our other co-lead in India, the chapter. He's also a technical steering committee member. Okay, one more minute. We'll start at 12.03. This is just posted to the uh, the, the WeChat groups. So um, we might get a, a trickle of more people in after after we get started. So, but good to yeah. see. Oh, this is, this, this is a, it just goes in waves. I don't know how Zoom does it actually. <laughs> Okay, I think we shall start. Should we start recording? It's on. It's on. Okay. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone here in China and around Asia Pacific. Uh, good evening to you all in the US and a very good, very early morning to those joining us in Europe. I'm Julian Gordon. I'm the Vice President for Hyperlasia in Asia Pacific, and I'm based uh, here in Xiangang in Hong Kong, and I'm excited to be here, introducing this special Hyperledger webinar with BSN. I've been looking forward to this event all week. We've had an extraordinary response to this very interesting subject. Since China's blockchain-based service network, or BSN, launched last year, there's been a lot of interest in the global blockchain and business communities in exactly who BSN are, what they are doing today, their strategy and plans ahead, how they're deploying Hyperledger Fabric and why they joined Hyperledger as a member. And we've had an amazing, and we have an amazing panel here today to discuss this. Hyperledger, BSN and FinTech leadership, a real meeting of blockchain minds. So if you have questions during the webinar, please use the Q&A function below in the Zoom. And we're gonna gather all those questions during the session. Then hopefully with time at the end, we will have a Q&A. And without much further ado, I'd like to ask each panelist to introduce yourselves and your role in all of this. And we're gonna do this in alphabetical order. Order. So uh, Brian, could you start with uh, your introduction, please? 
Sure, thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm really glad to be here. <clears throat> I'm Brian Bellendorf. I'm executive director of Hyperledger, also general manager for blockchain healthcare and identity initiatives at the Linux Foundation. I, and I, I've been, I, I think I've told people my first foreign travel uh, as executive director of Hyperledger was actually to China uh, back in September of 2016 uh, to talk to folks there about, uh, well, actually at the second Ethereum DevCon, um, but to, uh, uh, to talk to folks about the blockchain community in China. And uh, since that point in time, China has been a really important part uh, uh, for Hyperledger. And so I, I, seeing the rise of the BSN has been something of interest to us for sure. Uh, we're very keen to see governments around the world recognize the importance of this by building infrastructure, much like the roads and highways and bridges and, and the like of, uh, of modern physical infrastructure or even internet infrastructure. I think blockchain infrastructure is a really interesting topic. And so I'm eager to hear more about how BSN uh, will, plans to build this, this infrastructure, how it is building this infrastructure, and working with entrepreneurs like, like Stacy uh, and other companies to help uh, bring about that future. OK, thank you. Stacy. Oh, hi. Morning, good afternoon, and evening to everyone. The, this is Stacy. I'm in Beijing. And uh, please accept my warmest Greetings, greetings, and uh, I'm the CEO of S Labs. Uh, this is a corporate. This is a company we focus on D app development. Uh, I was a banker, and has been that for 20 years. So by very accidental scenario, I stepped into blockchain world, and especially thank uh, BSN. It brought us to a wider and uh, more opener world of the blockchain. So we may fo focus on two uh, applications. Uh, first one is finance. The other one is uh, special government and corporate requirements. Later we'll share all these, uh, what do we, we do to everyone. So if you have any questions, just uh, ask me without hesitation. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, and Yifan? Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning from Beijing. Uh, my name is Yifan He, and uh, I'm the CEO and the founder of uh, Red Day Technology. And uh, Red Day is one of the founding members of uh, uh, BSN blockchain-based uh, uh, service network. So, uh, and we actually have a very long history with uh, Hyperledger and Fabric because when we launched the beta testing version of BSN back in uh, 2019, uh, October, we only have Fabric on BSN. So at that time, we can call BSN as a fabric-based service network, okay? So after, you know, after the launch, then we add, you know, like physical because like Zeta, like Curium recently. So we trying to, of course, what BSN is, is we really trying to provide, you know, everybody, all the developers, one stop shop, okay? To do whatever they want with blockchain technology, you know, very low cost way and also, you know, very uh, uh, convenient, okay? They don't need to build their system. They don't need, you know, to, to maintain their system. They just bring their smart contract and boom, you know, everything's done by us. Thank you. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you. Thank you all. So now before we talk about BSN specifically, uh, I would like to get each of your perspective and understanding of and the history and, and importance of blockchain in China, because this started in China, right? So uh, maybe we could start with Yifan and talk about, I think everyone's understand, interested in seeing your perspective of what's happening in China and blockchain. Okay. So uh, but, uh, first, uh, everybody knows, you know, China basically, you know, uh, doesn't really allow ICOs and uh, exchanges, you know, to, to run in, inside China. But uh, I think China is the most friendly, you know, country to blockchain technology. Uh, uh, everybody knows, you know, the president, uh, she actually, you know, made, made the blockchain technology as a, you know, technical strategy of national te technical strategy of China. Uh, I think, I think the, the reason why it's, uh, 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 I think there's uh, two reasons. One, one is the central government of China, you know, someone there really, really understand what blockchain is. You know, it, it, it definitely is a new technology will change the world just like the internet did someone has a deep understanding of blockchain technology in you know, China's central government. And the second one is, uh, you know, the China 
you know, always uh, want to be a leader in the technology world. Uh, I, I think after go through all the technology, you know, the blockchain is uh, probably something, you know, China and other country is on the same starting point. So it's not like AI, like chips, you know, we, you know, still a little bit far behind, but for blockchain technology, everybody on the starting point. So there's a chance China can be a future leader in this technology. So I think that's why, you know, the China government really, really, you know, want to push the, you know, the blockchain technology forward in China. Uh, th that means actually uh, the government already spent uh, a lot of money uh, into blockchain technology. Uh, that's why, you know, all the uh, small and medium companies and all the technology companies get this kind of funding from government and build, you know, applications, build, you know, tools for, for, for blockchain uh, 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 industry. So I, I, I think also in the next two years, uh, you know, all the te uh, blockchain technology in China will move really, really fast. So I, I, I think there's a shot, you know, China can be a leader in this, you know, in blockchain. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's a, that's a great, great perspective. And and and, and Stacy, what's your view on on China? How do you see blockchain in China? Yes, uh, we've been in this area for three, almost half, uh, four years. Uh, we can see all the procedure and all the developments. Uh, at first, that uh, people think that blockchain is too far away from me. I'm a North, northern people, I'm a northern citizen. I know nothing about the new tech. I don't care about that. That's what kind of bullshit. And after some time, uh, especially when the government, they use a lot of uh, media or other ways, means to uh, tell people what's going on here. We are doing some new tech, but the new tech is not, it's not separate. But just like Brian you said, it's connected with AI with uh, IoT, with a lot of new other technologies. It brought us a new world. And everybody, almost everybody knew and uh, knows that we are facing a new world. So many changes flying to us. So especially last year after BSN launched, uh, I think the, the reputation and uh, uh, famous story of blockchain, they can brought us, especially the trust between strangers or um, not known companies. We set up trust. So easy, so easy to and pay attention to the new technology. That's why we are facing more requirements and people will use the blockchain as a typical model say, you see, I have the uh, innovation way of thinking. This is a benchmark or this is a bookmark of that. So we are doing a lot of search, research and pioneer work now. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And I, um, yeah, there is so much happening in China in blockchain, it, it's, it's amazing. So, so Brian, somebody who's visited there and I think being since the beginning of this, um, what's your perspective of what's happening in China? Right. Well, um, I, 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 it's been important for us to engage, um, uh, not only because we felt like this is an extension of the uh, movement towards open source software that uh, I, I started. I remember first visiting China in 2002, actually, and talking about open source software and having a slightly different, different reaction then, um, though still seeing some pockets of it to today open source software being very large and the Linux Foundation having a lot of different projects with uh, ongoing activities in China um, as part of building open source is really a, a global movement. Um, but in particular around blockchain technologies and so many of the use cases uh, cross borders, right? So many of them are about international finance. So many of them are about uh, international supply chains, right? Uh, it was important to recognize, look, most supply chains in the world either start or pass through China at some point, perhaps all of them, right? Uh, I, and every one of them involve money flows that sometimes touch China or, or you know, other countries in the region. So it's really important as we build out global blockchain infrastructure and global blockchain technologies that those are uh, technologies that China can use, can participate in, and can feel uh, as close to as any of the others. So 
that's been a part of our work there is to make sure we're building not just a user base in China, but a contributor base there as well. Uh, and uh, companies who are building products and services and making money using this technology so that it really is a multi-stakeholder uh, thing and a, a global technology initiative. And so that's why it's been great to see it picked up so much in China. Yeah, so I think we, we can we agree that it sounds like China is definitely and that things are in production and things are happening in China. It, it, it's, it's and it's a, for all those reasons, right? So so let's look at BSN, right? So Yifan, so let's kind of demystify this a bit. I've heard many people talk about BSN. So so what is BSN? Um, so if you could explain what it is, maybe its origins and then and the role. I think you're, you're the CEO of Red Date Technology and you're the role of Red Date Technologies. That would be, be great. Okay. Uh, BSN is a little bit complicated. Uh, if we uh, put it simply, is uh, uh, we basically build one uh, specialized uh, blockchain layer on top of the all the core services. So uh, and and uh, you know uh, make this environment uh, to be uh, blockchain specific, and then the, uh, you know people can access to public chains, can deploy their uh, private chains. So uh, uh, that's that, that's basically an environment we want to build, and uh, and it's just like uh, you know the regular cloud services, you know you don't need to build a data center in order for you to build your own website. So uh, <coughs> that, that's what we do. Uh, because right now, if you want to build a private chain, you still need to set up the environment, you know, build your you know all the nodes and connect them together and maintain it, you know, for yourself. And we BSN is building everything, integrating everything into BSN. And uh, and you just need to bring your smart contract, and we handle everything else for you. So that's uh, that's the basic concept of of BSN. That's why we are integrating all the cloud services. Uh, we are setting up the public city node, actually, uh, which is uh, uh, the BSN's virtual data center. Uh, inside all the major cloud services in all the regions of, of each cloud services. And, and we link all the public city node together, it becomes the BSN. And on those virtual data center, we put uh, we, we we continue integrating more and more, you know, permission framework. So you can build your own permission chain, you know, anywhere you want. You can put one peer in Beijing, one peer in Tokyo, one peer in Paris, and the link, and also three peers on different cloud services and the click button, we link the chain for you. And also uh, uh, we uh, and also we have a, a, a public chain, uh, and uh, you can you know through one gateway and access fifteen uh, public chains. And by end of this year, that number will raise to forty. So all the major public chains with one single you know payment plan, like twenty dollars, ten dollars, and one gateway you can access all of them. So that's uh, 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 and, uh, and 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 also it's uh, we position uh, BSN as an infrastructure. Which means you know how people use it. They they will go through we call that BSN portals. Actually, we don't even want to run an official BSN portal uh, uh, because we provide APIs to to the websites. Uh, for example, for a developer community website, they can use our uh, API to very very easily and cheaply to build a blockchain as services section onto their website. So they manage their own users. They they uh, they process their own payments and all those personal information stay in the portal. On BSN, we don't have any personal information. We don't know who build watching portals now. Okay, so that's basically the structure of uh, 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 BSN. Uh, uh, the idea actually uh, you know uh, uh, came up with three years ago, uh, and. Um, at that time, we think, uh, you know, even today, we think the blockchain industry is uh, very similar to the early stage of the internet. You know, each chain is, uh, uh, you know, each, uh, each chain is uh, like an internet. Okay, eventually, how internet becomes so powerful is basically, you know, linking all the internet and mix data together. So you can build more and more new business model and do a lot of new innovation based on the data, you know, mixed uh, together. And also the internet, the cost to build a website become lower and lower. So, so, so the idea of BSN actually came from the internet. And uh, you know, three years ago, you know, we saw nobody really building something like this. Uh, even the blockchain technology is already like 10, 10 years old, but nobody trying to build an infrastructure like this. So uh, right day, I'm working with China Mobile, China Union Pay, 
you know, the, uh, we uh, three of us, uh, you know, know each other for a long time, and uh, and uh, uh, you know, we uh, we think we have the resources together to pull this off. That's when we started, and uh, so we launched last year, and uh, so far, uh, you know, so far so good. So I I, I think everybody. Uh, uh, when they know BSN, they really, really like the idea. They everybody think this is the right way. You know, for now, someone needs to build the uh, the infrastructure to bring down uh, bring uh, bring down the cost, also enable the interoperability. Because on BSN, one major part is the interoperability. Because all the chains within our environment, it's much easier and and low costly. To, to build the interoperable functions between different chains. Yeah, that's basically the BSN. Okay, excellent. So, and, and anyone who's got questions, please ask questions. I know a lot, your great explanation, but the, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. <laughs> so people will want to know more information about that. Actually, another thing is, is how, how do the cloud providers connect with you? I think you work on top of cloud providers, is that, is that yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, we, uh, we install a, a public city node software yeah. Uh, on uh, on top of the uh, cloud service, inside the cloud service, and pull you know virtual machines into this virtual data center, then build all the all the frameworks, all the you know systems inside this virtual data center. It's it, it, it's just like you build a physical data center. You need the hardware. You you have software. Basically, it's a, we install a software inside a data center and convert that. You know, to a virtual data center of BSN, and then then they, they can sell their uh, uh, cloud uh, resources through BSN. So BSN become a channel for them. So we've got a quick question here. Actually, I'm going to put this in here because I think it's very relevant. Right? It says, uh, "How do you how?" Somebody says, "How do we build a consortium in BSN?" So if you want to build up a consortium, how how does that? I might help people understand it better. So I wanted to build up a five node consortium. How would I do that in BSN? Okay. Uh, so uh, basically, is uh, uh, you go to any portal, okay? Yes, because yeah. it, I mean, you know, we can provide APIs to you. You can go through the APIs, but it's for you know too technical. So for regular uh, 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 developer, they go to any portal, any portal they trust, okay? Then go there, register, and uh, they go to our permission services, okay? Or whatever name the portal, you know, uh, put it there. So they click that and they can choose a framework. Okay, there's Fabric, there's Facebook Plus, there's QRAM, there's there will be code and, and the substrate and uh, and also you know the SATA, a bunch of frameworks. So they choose one framework and then they can choose where they want to build the peers. Okay, and uh, this is a private chain. Okay, for, for the consortium chain, it will be different uh, uh, form. Uh, so then uh, uh, from all the public city nodes. Around the world, you can choose where you want to put uh, your peer to. You can choose uh, multiple peers in one public city now, and you can put one peer into any public city now. And also, you need to upload your smart contract. Okay, and the set of the functions, set of roles, and also you can choose uh, uh, how you want to generate your certificate. Okay, you want, you know, BSN to host the, the certificates for you, or you can generate the, the pub, public chain and the private chain yourself and upload the public chain to BSN. So we will generate the certificate for you. You choose all of them and click a button. Then we build the chain for you. For example, for, for Fabric, we build the chain for you. And, and also, if, uh, if you want to build, uh, you know, some peer belong to other developer, then uh, that developer also get on the uh, the, the BSN portal and uh, you know create their own peer and we can link them together become one chain. Okay, that's interesting. So I think that that helps people. I've got a few more questions. But I'm going to go back to them. I, we're getting a lot of questions now on that, but we'll go back to those in a minute. So, um, so can you explain uh, the uh, the success that BSN has had with Hyperledger Fabric, uh, and and why and why is that? I mean, uh, and. I mean, you want to go talk to that a little bit, and then Brian, maybe you can talk a little bit about the hyperledger community and, and and your views as well. Yeah, sure. And uh, I mean, when we build this, we need uh, you know first the uh, framework we can work on. So uh, I mean, there's uh, there's uh, you know the, the fabric is definitely on top of the list, and it's it's the most widely used framework even in China. 
So that's why you know we choose framework uh, fabric as the first framework we we integrate, and uh, and also uh, so far uh, on BSN the majority of the chains private chain construction chains build on BSN is uh, based on the fabric. So it, uh, I think I think uh, the the reason is uh, first is uh, you know fabric is open source. You know many many chains actually in China they are not open source. So the first one is open source and it's very easy to to use. For example, the uh, uh, for for programming smart contract, you can use Java, right? You can you can use Go language. So it's easier for traditional developer to adopt to learn, uh, 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 you know, how to program in a smart contract based on Fabric. So I, I think I think uh, you know, uh, and also uh, 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 Fabric, uh, you know, uh, progress really really quickly. You know, upgrade you know from one point four point three to 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 two point oh. I I think and it offers a lot of functions and uh, you know tools for developers, you know, to easily to develop uh, their own DApp. That's actually the, the I mean same as BSN. We also provide a lot of tools and also you know make things easier for developer to develop their own DApp. For example, for Fabric on BSN, we actually offer, we call that preset smart contract. So basically you don't even need to use your own smart contract. You just check a box and we deploy a standard smart contract for you. If your application only need, you know, input data, delay data, do some search, you know, simple function, then you don't even need to program your own. So that's based on the, you know, Fabric. We can provide that kind of services. Okay, Brian, do you want to? Uh, thank you. I, I mean, I, I think I think Fabric has grown in popularity in China, partly because of the success of the community we've had there from the beginning. I want to highlight in particular the China Technical Working Group that has uh, worked so hard to try to connect the developers there uh, I, and, and the ones for whom the, uh, you know, crossing the, the, the border might represent either a, a language barrier or a time zone barrier or an understanding of how open source works kind of barrier. Uh, they've worked really hard to cross that, that, that boundary and, and try to help the developers in China feel like part of the, the global community. We also have a very active community of translators uh, who've translated the documentation, lots of examples, uh, and have written a lot of content and sample code uh, local to China as well. So that's helped there. Um, and then it's helped that that's obviously fabric has been very popular uh, globally as well. So uh, BSN's uh, ambitions outside of China can also line up with that success inside. And 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 and, and Yifan, how, how, what what kind of percentage, or can you say how many how many of uh, your implementations today are uh, uh, are on hyperledger uh, fabric? Majority. The majority. Yeah. Around or around seventy. Yeah, and we're seeing similar actually across from our perspective across yeah. China in terms of across the the, the, the spectrum, right? Uh, fabric is uh, in a strong strong place. So yeah, thank you for that. And that now I think uh, we understand what BSN is. Uh, we got a bit of understanding of, of, of the China market. So let's look at the as, as I said, where you know why we're we using this technology, right? So I think it's great that we have Stacy here. Uh, so if you could talk a little bit and, and talk about why. You know, about who you are, uh, at S Labs, and why you're using BSN, uh, and uh, you know what applications you're running today. I think uh, that would be really interesting. Thank you. Uh, S Labs, uh, as I said, S Labs is a company we focus on D apps development. Uh, we have been there for three and a half years, and uh, especially we focus on finance and uh, government and uh, corporate uh, requirements. So at least, at least uh, in, in the beginning, I remember clearly, we used uh, Hyperledger for most of our cases, projects. And since last year, we changed to uh, BSN because uh, different clients have different specific requirements. Okay, let's say I am a tech idiot. <laughs> I know nothing about uh, three or four years ago, I know nothing about technology. Uh, no blockchain. The first time when people mentioned blockchain to me, I said, what? What's that? So <laughs> I've been in finance area for 20 years in, in almost half of my lifetime. So in the financial area, we, we were cheated all the time. I don't know whether you have that experience before or not, but uh, a lot of companies, they will, they will rewrite or they will alternate uh, uh, their financial report to cheat, to get more loans from the banks, but they use fake data. 
So uh, when you met a guy, he, he told you all the beautiful stories and the, all the financial data are so beautiful and you trust him like your brother. But the other day you find out that he's a cheater. So, <laughs> so this is impossible and this is terrible. So we are thinking about, is there anything that can help us to get real data instead of the fake data? Can we recognize and control the risk rather than uh, we just, the client submit something in paper, black and white. So we are looking for that in the market. So finally we got blockchain. Of course we will use that with uh, big data, AI and LT, a lot of stuff together nowadays. So uh, our focus in financial area, we can uh, share a case, a real case. Maybe, maybe everyone will like that. Uh, you know, in China, for all these SME, small and medium-sized corporates, enterprises, they are so hard to get trust from the banks. The banks will only give the provide loans to them unless you are guaranteed, you have collateral, you have um, like your house, whatever. If you are just apply for a loan, credit loan, no, none, impossible. So we will try, we try to use um, blockchain data, the real business data, instead of the financial report to help them to get loans. That make a lot of, a lot of progress we call so-called progress because the, the numbers still low. Uh, till now, in the last three years, we have helped more than uh, 10,000 SMEs to get, yeah, to get more than uh, almost 2 billion, 2 billion RMB loans. And more and more corporates, SMEs, they are queuing to connect to the platform to get financial aid from the banks. Especially, <clears throat> we don't need any guarantee, no collateral, no house, no real estate, and the interest rate is really low. Uh, the lowest we, we can get from the bank is 4.5 per annum. That means you borrow 1 million, for the whole year, you only pay the interest rate at uh, 45,000 RMB. That's very interesting, especially last time, last year in the COVID, you know, the period, every SME is in such difficult time. So we use that tool to help them to get recovered. So the, uh, till now, the good news is till now, there is no bad debt because we use the vivid data, business data to help them to recognize them. So uh, the, these case is also reported uh, as a typical help SME case study to the central government and central bank. Yeah. Uh, and the other one uh, case is we set up a consortium chain for Xiong'an area. This is a rising star in China. So we set up the con uh, consortium chain to put all the, uh, we call smart construction supervision platform. We put all the uh, building construction work into blockchain. In Xiong'an, only in Xiong'an, there are more than 200 construction works and projects in Xiong'an area. We put everything, every data on blockchain. So it means every single piece of data is unnoterable. Un so if there are anything wrong goes with the building or the construction work, uh, all the responsibilities can be traced back from the data side. And also in the next time, in the next stage, we would try to uh, make the payroll of all the workers, you know, payrolls of workers, especially the construction workers, sometimes or most of the time they are delayed. So we'll use uh, digital currency to make the payroll cl more clear and uh, transparent. Yeah, this is the two vivid case. We it, this is happening in the real world. That's, yeah. that, that's great, thank you. And those are really, I mean, there's a supply chain finance, which I think is one of the one of the hot areas, right? And, and you say small, but 
Uh, 10,000 SMEs is not small in my in my book, and uh, two million RMBs loan is 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 is, is significant, and that 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 is wonderful. And you're providing small businesses with that, that accessibility to to uh, to low interest rates, which is different sometimes between running a business and not running a business, right? Uh, it's 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 significant providing that 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 liquidity. Uh, I got one question here on that actually as we we're going there, which I think is a good question because so and I, he said they said how can blockchain. Uh, data replace financial reports. I don't think it's actually doing that. So maybe you explain how you get the data. I'm doing some ERP systems or how, how do you know that it's because okay. it, yeah. 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 Yeah, Brian's right. Uh, we are focusing on supply chain finance, especially. So we will uh, use a system connection, get the, the core enterprise ERP data. And uh, that shows all the SME to do business with them. And uh, all these data are real and uh, are real on time. So every single order every day they put and uh, every single purchase they make is clearly shown. So we would, at least uh, the core enterprise will help us to provide in last 24 months business data and business records, track record for us. So we will link the system also to the bank. Uh, in this case, everything is linked together. All the platforms are connected in the uh, uh, in the in the system. So if, if there's this SME, they, uh, he needs um, a loan. He will apply in the app app, and uh, when he fill in his name, his company name, and his uh, uh, unique number in the serial in a unique number. And uh, all the system will provide their business data automatically. And we will provide that after our, uh, our work uh, to the bank. So they, they don't need to provide their financial data anymore. They just provide their name, their registered name and uh, shareholder, the real shareholder, the contact information and the record of their face. He is him, himself. So everything will be done wait within 15 minutes and within 15 minutes that means his loan after applied will arrive to his account so this is all done by system not any one individual exactly so it's basically it's 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 a distributed system right so providing that 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 trust and uh and just to be clear you said you moved from fabric to blockchain to bsn i think you moved from running your own planet your own Fabric to running Fabric on BSN, right? So this is all running running on 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 on, uh, on Fabric. So uh, that's great. So yeah, the person said thanks for answering. <laughs> that was a good answer, definitely. So and uh, in terms of construction, uh, I think the other one is construction, which I think is is also a very hot subject. And working on on the provenance and making sure that people are doing the right thing in the supply chain and our buildings are all all safe. And I love the the, the final one, making sure that workers actually get paid, which. Is, is, is obviously a very key thing. So uh, yeah, thank you that. And I think we may have more questions as we go on, uh, uh, as, as we continue on that. So, so thank you, Stacey. So um, next, um, uh, what, what do you see? And I think I'll, I'll ask this to Brian Yufan. Uh, so what do you see as opportunities for, for Red Day as a new Hyperledger member and uh, BSN to collaborate with the global blockchain community? Would you like me to take that first? You can take that first. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, um, you know, the Hyperledger community is comprised of its member organizations, right? Uh, is really, uh, we, we don't have an independent, large, massive developer team building all this great code, uh, nor do we go out and sell it, nor do we go out and, and deploy it for, for companies, uh, I, you know, for, for end user organizations. We depend upon the infrastructure organizations, the technology companies, the, the, the tool makers, and the systems integrators, and all those who actually make this technology work for the rest of the world. So the first most important thing that I hope Red Date and every co company like them does is go out and, and build, right? Because building uh, in, and serving some real needs uh, gets that cycle of, of feedback uh, into open source projects kickstarted, right? It, none of what we do would matter at all if it wasn't out there actually delivering value for people. So even that returns value to us uh, in, in no other way. Um, the second, obviously, is giving us an opportunity to, when people do wonder how 
can we get the stuff deployed? Being able to channel folks to companies like Red Date and, and projects like BSN uh, as an easy way to get deployed, you know, allows us to reach a much bigger audience, a much bigger footprint, right? So that helps as well. Um, I certainly hope, uh, and I've seen uh, evidence that they are working with the rest of the community in China, uh, as well as uh, other parts of Asia. Uh, certainly the engagement that they've done with uh, China Mobile and China Telecom uh, are really interesting to note here. Uh, China Unicom, sorry, certainly uh, 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 worth noting here. Um, uh, in terms of helping us educate the industry there and globally about how enterprise blockchain works and, and why it's a valuable thing and all these use cases. Uh, and I uh, certainly would hope that as in, like any company that has now de stepped deep into Hyperledger and is depending upon the technology, some of that coming back in the form of small things like bug fixes or uh, bigger things like working with the others uh, who are adding support for the, the Chinese national encryption standards, um, uh, helping perhaps even with translations and some of the other work or potentially contributing uh, to the efforts to add uh, major new features to Fabric going forward and help just uh, spread out uh, the, uh, um, the developer pool around the core of Fabric to be, to be much more decentralized, if you will. So i uh, looking forward to all those different things potentially happening. OK, do you want to add anything to that, Yifan? Yeah, uh, just like I described about the BSN, it's, uh, you know, we are an integrator. OK, there's a port operator to manage all the developers. There's, uh, you know, cloud services, they provide all the, all the resources. And there's a framework, you know, what we work with to really, really to, you know, all the DApp is built based on. So, so uh, which means we don't really develop anything blockchain. We rely on the, you know, ecosystem to put everything together. We just manage them into a right order. Okay. So that's why it's, uh, you know, for people really, really to develop the, 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 the decentralized application, they still need to rely on each framework. Okay. So uh, that's why it's, uh, you know, by working with, uh, you know, Hyperledger, join the community, you know, we really have begin to have access to a lot of resources to make, you know, because we need fully, fully to understand how each framework works. That's how we can build an ecosystem that, you know, better to, to serve all the developers. So uh, since we joined, uh, uh, you know, uh, because we, we, we actually, you know, deployed, uh, deployed a version of Fabric with Chinese encryption. Okay, now we are working with, you know, uh, uh, the Hyperledger Chinese team, you know, to make that better. Okay, that's actually very, very important because for the applications from the government, Chinese government and the huge banks, they actually require Chinese encryption. Okay, you cannot use K1, so uh, R1. So uh, and and uh, and also uh, since we join, we we begin to talk with other members. Uh, actually, we are going to launch a new feature for the fabric on DS, and it's uh, we are going to launch an IDE. Okay, for for fabric, you know, uh, anybody use uh, BSN, they can download an IDE and uh, you know to 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 create projects to build their codes inside this IDE and click button. It goes to onto BSN, so it's it make the developer process much much easier. You you probably don't even need to go to our portal and uh, click around. Everything can be done inside this IDE. So that's actually you know the resources we get from the Hyperledger community. So that's why it's so important you know to join. You know we have much better access to all the resources around Fabric. fabric. Okay, excellent. So, uh, so uh, I think we'll, let's, let's let's explore quickly the other uh, a concept you beginning at the beginning, the internet um, of uh, blockchain we talked about, right? Uh, and I think Ifan and Brian can both talk to that. So maybe Ifan, you can talk a little bit about what that is, and then Brian, as one of the you know pioneers of the internet, right? You can talk a little bit about your view of uh, of uh, of that as well. Yeah, I mean, what what internet is. The internet basically connecting all the data centers hardware together, like the data can be flow freely around the world. I, I, I think that's, that's you know, uh, uh, internet is. So, which means, you know, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, it need connecting all the IT systems, okay? And, and uh, you know, uh, people from one, one, you know, one corner of the world can reach the data from another side of this world. 
that's what internet is and cheaply okay you cannot spend one million to get that data you, you should get that data in three seconds for free okay as long as you have access so that's what internet is so uh, if we move the concept to blockchain means you know the internet of blockchain first is all the data on any chain should have you know smooth connection Okay, for example, from, from EOS chain, if you want to get the data from a private chain you get, it should be just, you know, 20 lines of code should do that. Now it probably take you, you know, 10,000 lines of code to do that. So it's, 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 it's too expensive. So I, I think the data needed to, to move freely uh, from all chains. And the second one for internet is because a internet connect all the resources, not only cloud resources, I actually connect all the business, which means on internet, you can choose, you know, you have much, much, you know, bigger choices to choose what kind of business or services you want. And that make, you know, all the business on internet competing with each other and that, that price drops. So that, which means people have, you know, a lot of choices to access to cheap services, but very good services. So that means for blockchain, it's the same. We need to have all the costs on blockchain drop. Okay, so we need to build an ecosystem on all the chains to compete uh, equally, and we need you know all the portals to compete with each other, and we want all the you know D apps to compete with each other. That 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 environment to compete is also a main concept for internet. So that's also what BSN is trying to do. So I've, I've been on the, the internet a very long time, right? And um, when, I, when I first got started, the main way that people would chat across different networks was a tool called IRC. And IRC is still around, of course, everyone, uh, well, not everybody knows about it, hardly anybody knows about it anymore. But um, I, when, 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 we, when the internet arrived, we didn't all have to agree just to use IRC, right? IRC emerged and it evolved, people wrote new clients for it, but then a whole different network started to arise. Some of them initially were very close, like AOL Instant Messenger, and then that opened up a bit. And obviously you have everything up to today's modern Slack, right? And even today with Slack, I mean, Slack is a hosted service, but you'll be on a Slack for one community project and one group of people, a different Slack for a different group of people and different project, right? And the fact that they're both using Slack means the tooling is kind of the same, right? Uh, but you can have different communities, different constituencies because you have different kinds of problems to solve, different people involved in solving that problem. So I think blockchain networks are gonna work the same way. First off, we don't need a single standard because just like IRC, even though IRC was pretty good, there's plenty of room for additional ones. At the internet, we solved the core problems of DNS with naming and routing with TCP IP and, and BGP. And after that, everything else we build on top, we can allow for optionality, right? So this has been why it's been no surprise to see the enterprise blockchain space grow in this very kind of colorful, you know, many different kind of networks way because the underlying infrastructure of the internet allows that to happen. What'll be interesting though, is how we connect these together. So today, for example, I can use something like IFTTT to uh, you know, wire a connection up to a home sensor and to my uh, Slack channel to let me know, hey, you know, um, there's somebody's at your door or something like that in a Slack channel, right? Likewise, we should be able to wire up these different blockchain networks with bridges and signals and ways to communicate between them, ways even for smart contracts on one to query data from another. Um, the harder part is gonna be to get a transactional across those. And that's where there's work uh, uh, in the public ledger side, groups like Cosmos. I know BSN is uh, getting to know Cosmos pretty well. Uh, uh, to projects like Cactus, which is at Hyperledger, is a toolkit for building integration between different blockchain systems. So there's going to be a, a couple of different approaches to this that emerge. The important thing now is to do research, to start building prototypes, to start looking for use cases, uh, and not holding up the perfect. Uh, well, you know, so that you know, not waiting for the one network that solves it all, but instead uh, getting started on these kind of use case and community specific uh, blockchain networks, uh, whether they're using Fabric or Quorum or, or Hyperledger Bezu or any of the other protocols out there. Okay, so so thank you both for that. We actually, we've got, we've got, I've got tons of questions coming in. And we only have a limited amount of time left. So uh, I think, uh, I think firstly, Yifan, let's talk about international. So uh, 
you find, uh, BSN predominantly um, it's, it's Chinese and you're going international, maybe you could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, how people get in contact. I know you're going international, talk a little about your, your international kind of expansion plan as okay. use strategy. Okay, uh, so uh, basically, uh, BSN is a uh, is a global network. It's just just like the internet. Okay, the mm. uh, that that means uh, in each region there's uh, will be a different uh, regulation. Like the internet, right? There's a CAC managing you know internet in China. There's a FCC in the United States that also regulates internet. So that's why for BSN in different part of the world it will be you know managed and governed in different ways. Uh, uh, that's why it's uh, for for BSN International. We're actually setting up a foundation in Singapore, okay. And uh, we will have some major partners join in this foundation, and this foundation will manage BSN uh, International, you know, together. So it, it, the the BSN International won't be managed by any company from China. So it's uh, because it's uh, you know not China, it's outside China. So uh, and and uh, we will open source everything to all the foundation members uh, uh, in three months. Uh, from now, and uh, we will open source everything to public in two or three years. So everybody can, you know, basically they can even use our source code to build their private BSN. Okay, so uh, that's how we we want to make the BSN as transparent as possible. Okay, everybody can understand, go through the codes, how that works, how the data is stored, how the certificates are issued. So make sure nobody, you know, there's a funny business or, or something. So we, we really have a, a roadmap for, for international expansion, okay? Uh, but this foundation will actually become the governing body, which means if we want to build any data center outside China, they need to get a permit, uh, uh, permission from this foundation. Anyone want to build a portal outside China will get a permission from this foundation. So, so, uh, that's why under this foundation, uh, probably just ready and uh, you know China Mobile as uh, one of the you know stakeholders inside that. But uh, probably we don't even have majority voting power. So this will be you know governed just as an uh, NGO. So uh, so uh, uh, we will publish the structure of the foundation probably in in one month or, or, or two months. So everybody know how that you know who is involved, uh, how that is, uh, and and also we. Uh, inside this foundation, we will build a technical community. Okay, uh, we will invite public five to seven te technical company uh, uh, join us, and we will open source to uh, them for you know everything. And we invite them to take part of the development from us because the BSN become too big to handle by two, one or two companies. So we really want BSN become a you know global effort. And 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 you know from like more than a dozen companies from the world. So that's and also uh, uh, another way to expand is building more and more portals. So this year we uh, uh, we want to build ten portals in ten different regions. So and and each portal will have you know its own interface, its own user management, its own applications, its own payment methods. So so. That's also another way to expand the PSN internationally. Okay, that's excellent. And I got a lot of questions here. A lot of them are, are around governance. How does it work, right? So maybe I just uh, I ask a few of these to, to you now, right? Um, so the, the talk about BSN network on data centers was interesting. Is it possible to create an isolated network of BSN nodes, which is disconnected from the larger BSN network? How are these structured to meet the privacy and data export requirements of different governments? Okay, actually, this is a very good question. And uh, whoever asked this question really understands BSN. Actually, we have another product called the private BSN. So uh, uh, the, for, for the private BSN, there's uh, two, actually two major functions. The first one is we can deploy this private BSN on an intranet. So, so uh, uh, on this, uh, if, if there will be like hundreds of, you know, DR on this, uh, 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 internet and with different framework, then you need a private BSN to manage everything, manage all the resources, manage all the certificates, manage all the DR, to manage all the users. Uh, you, you know, uh, if you don't have private BSN, you will build, you know, silos, different silos. So it, it doesn't even connect to us. So uh, this is the first function of the private BSN. And the second one is 
if by regulation or other reason, there's a country, they say, okay, I want to build a, a BSN, but I don't want to connect to the global BSN network. I just want to set up, you know, uh, for example, one country's, you know, BSN network, and we will sell the resources from our country's data center, and we, we will only serve our, our developers. Then we can license you to build your own private uh, BSN to serve your own developers. Uh, but uh, but it, it will be only for country, okay? Because we don't want, you know, there's uh, so many private BSN competing with uh, global BSN. So, but uh, for that country, we can give a country license. They can build their own BSN. Okay, well, that, that's very interesting, right? Um, so the next question is, uh, who has the ownership of communication network between different BSN nodes? What kind of governance has been put in place to prevent, you know, monopolistic practices? Uh, actually, that's uh, uh, the question about the ownership of the PCNs. Yeah. Okay. So uh, right now in China, 80% uh, of the PCNs are owned by China Mobile. Okay. So so okay. which means uh, if a developer deploy deploy uh, uh, deploy uh, uh, application and one peer is on the China Mobile data center, actually the payment majority of that payment goes to the China Mobile because they basically they use. Uh, so, uh, so uh, in the future, when we open source, which means everybody can build their own PCN and connect to the uh, 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 BSN. So that's actually the goal. We don't want the PCN belong to one company or two company or three company. We want PCNs belong to each people. And they make money from BSN, okay? But the communication between the PCN actually goes through the internet. So everything is encrypted. Uh, based on the framework, okay, based on the framework. And uh, uh, because uh, if there's, uh, uh, let me say this, okay, if there's, uh, uh, th if there's a, 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 a application has peers on two PCN, th then those two PCN begin to communicate through this, uh, uh, this chain. If, I mean, for two PCNs, there's, you know, there's no chain really used both of them. They don't even communicate. <laughs> they don't even communicate. They actually, you know, we, we have ways to make sure our, all the PCN is up and running, and the, but the, it, the, all the connection based on the business, based on the chains. Okay. All right. So I, I, I think we're, we're coming to, the, I've got a lot of questions. I think we're going to get it. And, and, and there may be the big question, actually, people ask, what's the architecture? They want to know more about it. Where would they go to, 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 to find that out? So I presume they just go to the BSN. If they want to find out more about the architecture, they want to know more details about it. Um, I presume there's the, there is the white paper. There is a white paper you have, right? Which they... uh, yeah, the white paper actually a bit old. <laughs> the architecture <laughs> is a little bit different now. We probably need to update the white paper. But go to our Medium account, BSN base, the Medium account. And uh, there, there's a lot of articles, uh, you know, to describe what's B private BSN, what's the architecture, uh, and there's uh, information package there. So you can find all the links, useful links for, uh, you know, re relate to BSN. Yeah. And, and I, 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 when this is on YouTube, we'll put the link at the bottom. <laughs> so everyone watching on YouTube, you'll be able to get it. We'll, we'll send out that link. Uh, so let, let's wrap up with maybe just a lightning round, quick question for each of three of you, right? So, um, so you find so what are BSN? What are the what are the one or two plans and goals for the next five years for BSN? Tough question. Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, for next quarter, I can tell you, you know, one major update is the way we will launch, uh, you know, the uh, IDE suit, yeah, and uh, actually not only support fabric, they support almost all the framework, and uh, and in five years, we really want first we want BSN to be open source. Okay, just like I said, everybody can build a PCN and plug into, uh, 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 everybody can build a public signal and plug into the BSN. Everybody can build a portal and plug into the BSN. So there, that's, that's, I think, the number one goal to make BSN as, you know, as more and more successful. That's uh, number one. Second one is we really, really want to find as many regional partners as possible because each region partner, they understand you know, the requirements in that country, the regulations in that country. So we, we only provide the backbone of BSN. So they build their data centers, they build their portals. And to, you know, probably 
for BSN portals, no two of them looks the same, okay? Because we only provide APIs, so you handle all the interface. So uh, uh, we really want every single country has a BSN portal to serve the local developers. Yeah. Okay, so something like you want open source and you want to, uh, you know, every, this, 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 this model to replicate in many different places. So that, 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 that's great. So let's go to, and, and Stacy, thank you very much. The key for all this technology is for people to produce uh, uh, and, uh, applications that actually produce societal business outcomes. So what are your plans for the kind of next five years or however long you wish uh, with, you know, working with BSN and, and working with, you know, blockchain and hyperledger fabric? Yeah, um, to tell the truth, at the beginning, I don't think, I, I don't believe uh, like hyperledger and BSN is free. You know, in, in financial area, in banks, no free lunch, right? Everybody knows that. that at the beginning, everything uh, free at the last will be the most expensive. <laughs> but now after so many years, but after many years hard working, I believe that there will, there, uh, there are a bunch of people, they try to set up something so basic infrastructure. They don't eager for only cash return, but they want to do something to bring benefit for others. This is what I fully respect. And uh, let me bow here in front of the screen. And also I know there's a lot of professionals in this in front of the screen. And uh, also please show my respect to all of you. And you are the superstars to lead the whole world. For, B, uh, for S Labs, we believe that we in five, within five years, we will become one of the leading um, blockchain application companies also, we will become a famous data companies because now in our uh, platform, we have accumulated more than 15 million piece of data already. And all of them are supported by blockchain. So if you must become that you are confident about the future is made of data and that's the cherub pressless diamonds in the future, we are doing that on the way. So blockchain for us is not an end, it's just a start, it's a tool. And we'll use that charo tool, very charitable and uh, very powerful tool to get more everything in real, to describe a people, a man or girl or a company to show the real image. And that's very useful to the future. Okay, and thank you. Yeah. Let me thank you again for Happy Ledger and uh, for BSN for what they do in the past years and for the basic uh, infrastructure work. So they can bring us so many benefits and the convenience. Thank you so much, guys, for your help. Thank you, Stacy. I think. Uh, and Brian, final words, right, on uh, how you see the collaboration development moving forward? No, I'm just excited to, to see where it goes and um, to continue to help us grow the, the, the global community around Hyperledger. Okay. And, uh, and thank you. So thank you, uh, uh, Brian, Stacey, you find some amazing panelists. I think this is just the beginning of a conversation that's been going on anyway, right? But in, in the public domain. So I think we'd love to have more of these, these sessions, more of the sharing. And we have so many questions to answer. And thank you to you who are watching this. Uh, thank you very, very much. And uh, take care, keep safe. And I think we'll wrap up here. All right. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank Cheers. You. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. -bye.